Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God <clears throat> whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth come, came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Well, it's the first Sunday of 2015, but it's still Christmas here, which is nice. I spent my, <clears throat> I spent my New Year's um, tired and asleep before midnight, and I think, I think I was just. I think I was probably just too tired from all of the celebrating TCU's Peach Bowl win, I think. It just, just something about that. But it occurred to me as I sat and, and watched that game at TCU, aside from the one day where I was really sick, that three and a half hours I watched the game was the longest I had sat still since long before Christmas. <laughs> I'm just always bouncing around, doing something else. And I realize that's just how the world is. Time just keeps rolling and we keep moving. We roll right past Christmas. The world has probably already forgotten that Christmas was just a week ago or two weeks ago. My Christmas decorations in my house are already down, right? <laughs> Except for the lights on my house. Everything's down because it's when I have time. So I keep moving, right? Our mind at home is we're thinking about back to routines, back to schedules, and my mind's now off whatever it was on, and I'm thinking about what's happening in January, what needs to get done. I, we are a people on the move. We don't sit still with our bodies, and we sure enough don't sit still with our lives. We're constantly moving. We're constantly moving, trying to get to maybe a better place, or we're constantly moving to work up some ladder, or we're always moving to get something, maybe striving to keep up with the things that our neighbors have. We are in our people on the move. And we reflect on New Year's about what we want to be new in 2015, and we make resolutions about what we want that to look like as we move forward into a new year. But here it's still Christmas. <laughs> it's the second Sunday of Christmas. And we hear this song. It's beautiful. It's a creation-like song from John 1 about a beginning that started long before the calendars turned to 2015. It's about a beginning that doesn't depend on us, but it was a res resolution made by God. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. 
Verse 14, the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen that glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. What is this word? It strikes me that our our world is filled with words, words that have power, power to persuade, power to force, power to coerce, maybe even coerced by violence. There's words everywhere in this world that have the power to cut just as deeply as bullets. But this is the Christmas mystery of faith, that the word that God spoke in the beginning of creation is the same word that God speaks to the world at Christmas. That this is the word, a word of beginning that's not about the will of the flesh or ourselves. It's about a word of reconciling our flesh, reconciling our world to God. It's an end to the will of the flesh, the will of this world. And it shares a word of grace and truth that enters into this world and changes everything forever. That's what Ephesians is about. It's a a string of phrases that lists what that looks like. It's a word of truth, a gospel of salvation, marked by the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. That's God's word that enters into this world. The word made flesh is the same word that God speaks to us today. That brings a, a celebration, a resolution bigger than anything having to do with 2015. So we pause, we we slow down. From all the constant movement around, we pause at Christmas to ponder this word made flesh that lived among us. Now, a more literal meaning of what that looks like is, what that sounds like when you read that, is God pitches a tent in our midst. It's It's a throwback to the tabernacle days of ancient Israel when they wandered with a tabernacle that carried God's presence and it was a tent (laughs) that went everywhere they went as they were constantly wandering around in the wilderness. The word made flesh and lived among us means that God enters into a constantly moving and temporary world to speak a word of presence that is eternal. That's the word that God's been speaking since the very beginning of creation. And that, dear friends in Christ, is the good news that a people on the move are longing to hear. Because we can look around this world and we see cultures and we see circumstances where people are on the move and they're longing for that word of God's presence, eternal presence. Think about Latin America and folks who live in crude shacks clumsily put together, and that is home. I was thinking ahead to Sierra Leone and other parts of Africa that we'll talk about next week, right, where Africa, you have camps of hundreds of refugees huddled together in tents as makeshift shelters. These are people on the move, longing for some eternal presence. And bring it a little closer to home. Maybe we're just kind of coming out of a crisis where too many have lost jobs. and Too many have lost homes. Calvary on Tuesday nights houses folks who live on the streets or under bridges. These are two ends of the spectrum. But they're people who are on the move and will do whatever it takes to grab a hold of a word of longing and presence. Think about sickness that goes around this time of year, and I think about those in hospitals who catch their breath under tents of oxygen that get placed over their faces, longing and moving from place to place looking for treatment and for hope. And then at some point, we do find ourselves under another tent at a graveside, escorting a dearly departed or loved one on a final move, right? This is This is the life of people on the move, longing for a word of God's eternal presence. And so in those moments when we find ourselves and feel that, what is God's word? What is God's response? (laughs) It comes from verse 18. No one has ever seen God, and sometimes it feels like we don't. 
It is the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. How can we understand? How can we understand this God? How can we find a presence of the holy? It's at the point when the infinite finds its way into fragile flesh and into the suffering that we experience. It's when the holy gets sets up shop and gets housed in a body in this world to experience life that we know all too well. It's Christ is this one awaited and longed for, the one who is yearned for, the one in whom the deepest longings of life are met and responded to. We hear God's eternal word of presence when we glimpse Jesus. When we listen to God's word of grace upon grace that is announced in this world that is moving and searching for meaning everywhere it goes. And it all just reminds us that Christmas brings a word of God's salvation. That Christ was born and laid in a wooden manger so that one day Christ could could be nailed to a wooden cross. So that we could hear God's word of love through Christ's life, death, and resurrection so that we too could speak that word of life through our very lives into this world. Christ is God's word of relationship, spoken to the world throughout all time and spoken to us and through us. So that as we move through this world, and that we move quickly, that we would not move without God's word of presence. We don't move without first kneeling at this railing for a moment of stillness or quiet to hear a word that comes from this table, a word that feeds. Take and eat this bread. Take and drink this cup. You don't move from this building, this room, without passing the baptismal font and pausing at the waters to hear that word of blessing, that you are a child of God, sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever that we don't move in this world without that word of faith, that God's eternal love has entered into this world and moves with us. Thanks be to God for that word. Amen.